Winterfest, sponsored by Discover Doylestown. We have an exciting and interesting season this year. Because of COVID, we're going to be doing a few things a little differently. But look out for every Tuesday and Thursday evening as we're going to have special guests read stories to you online. And on Wednesdays, we're going to have the good old jolly Saint Nick. Well, Get those letters written up because he's going to read your letters online from you for everybody else to hear. So please join us with this exciting time of year, coming out, discovering Doylestown, having a wonderful time. And remember, if you go shopping, keep an eye out for our jolly friend Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and... Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> but when you're out and you're shopping, don't forget to wear your mask. She has three presents. He grabbed the nutcracker from Marie and tossed him in the air. All of the other reindeer. Olive was too shy to sing. I wonder what will happen. The elves arrived to help you. You never go out, and this is such a fine opportunity. I had great trouble to get it. Everyone wants to go, it is very Santa select. circled once above us and then disappeared into the cold, dark polar On sky. On Christmas Eve, we get out the ornaments. Some were Grant cause when he was a little boy. This is not a house. Well, I know. It's a castle. Fontaine Castle. Come on. Here arose such a clatter. I sprung from the bed to see what was the matter. Welcome everyone. Tonight I am reading a book called Dasher. It was written by Matt Tavares. Dasher. Life was not easy for the reindeer family of J.P. Finnegan's traveling circus and menagerie. They spent long days crammed together under the hot sun as an endless stream of curious people jostled to catch a glimpse of them. Even at night, there was little rest. Some nights, to pass the time, Mama would tell stories. It was a magical place, she would say. The air was crisp and cold, and the ground was always covered with a cool blanket of white snow. Your father and I were free to roam under the glow of the North Star. Dasher, the youngest reindeer, loved Mama's stories. Is that the North Star, Mama? she asked. The very same, Mama said. We always knew we were home when it was directly overhead. I wish I could go there, said Dasher. Mama sighed. I do too, she said. But Mr. Finnegan is not kind to animals who try to escape. Day after day, under the watchful eye of Mr. Finnegan, the reindeer family delighted crowds wherever they went. Dasher liked being with her family, and she loved meeting so many children who were always kind to her. Sometimes they even fed her carrots, which were her very favorite food. But at night, while the others were sleeping, she would lie awake, gazing at the bright star on the horizon. 
wishing for crisp cold air and cool blankets of white snow. One night, mighty winds shook the circus tents and rattled the animals' cages. Dasher was wide awake, wishing on the North Star when she was startled by a loud creak. The gate to their pen had swung open. Dasher could hear rustling from inside Mr. Finnegan's trailer. She glanced up at the North Star. She looked back at her sleeping family. She knew that this might be her only chance. Her heart pounded. She took a deep breath. And then as fast as she could, she ran. On she went for hours with the North Star as her guide. But no matter how far she traveled, it was still way off on the horizon. Do you see it up in the corner? Dasher began to wonder if she would ever make it there. She thought about turning back, but she couldn't remember the way. She didn't know what to do. So she looked up at the North Star and made a wish. Just then, Dasher heard something in the distance a soft jingling coming from the woods. There in a clearing, Dasher saw a man and a horse. I'm sorry, Santa, said the horse. The sleigh is just so heavy this year. The man smiled. Now don't you worry, Silver Bell, he said. We'll take all the breaks you need. But the children, said the horse, They'll be heartbroken if we can't deliver all these toys by Christmas morning. Oh, children, thought Dasher. She stepped forward. Maybe I can help, she said. Well, hello there, said the man. Dasher walked closer. The man smiled. Have you ever pulled a sleigh, he asked. Dasher shook her head. I've never even seen a sleigh, she said, but I pull a wagon just about every night. Well, said the man, how would you like to make a whole bunch of children really happy on Christmas morning? I would like that very much, said Dasher. Santa thanked Dasher and attached her harness. It was soft against her fur and its jingling bells made the most beautiful sound she had ever heard. Santa climbed into his sleigh and Dasher pulled with all her might. Then suddenly, the load felt lighter. Dasher looked down. They were flying. All night, Dasher and Silver Bell pulled Santa's sleigh through the air as Santa guided it from rooftop to rooftop delivering toys to children everywhere. Dasher had never experienced such a thrill, and she ate so many carrots, she felt like she would burst. She was having so much fun, she forgot all about the North Star. As the first light of dawn appeared on the horizon, they landed. The air was crisp and cold, the ground was covered with a cool blanket of white snow. Dasher searched for the North Star on the horizon, but couldn't find it anywhere. Santa smiled. Dasher, he said, look up. And there it was, directly overhead. Is that the North Star, she asked. Santa's eyes twinkled. Merry Christmas, he said, and welcome home. The North Star was just as wonderful as Mama's stories. Dasher roamed wherever she pleased, and Santa gave her all the carrots she wanted. But something was missing. I love it here, she told Santa, but I miss my family, and I wish we could be together. Santa smiled. That's your best wish yet, Dasher, he said. Let's go find them. Later that night, Dasher guided Santa's sleigh all the way to J.P. Finnegan's Traveling Circus and Menagerie. Mama, 
Papa, Dasha whispered. Everyone wake up. Mama lifted her head. Dasher, she said, is it really you? It's me, Mama, said Dasher. She told her family all about Santa and Silver Bell and how the North Pole was just as amazing as Mama's stories. But I missed you, she said. You were all I wished for. Dasher led her family to Santa's sleigh and Santa attached their harnesses. You're not going to believe this part, he said. When Christmas Eve arrived, Silver Bell watched as Santa prepared his team. Are you sure you don't want to come, asked Dasher. I'm sure, said Silver Bell. I know the eight of you will do a fine job. Late that night, as Santa and his new team of reindeer started soaring around the world, he called them by name for the very first time. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. On Christmas morning, after all the toys had been delivered, they flew back to the North Pole, where they still live happily today. There the air is crisp and cold. The ground is always covered with a blanket of white snow. And Dasher, has everything she ever wished for. I hope that you enjoyed that story. I look forward to seeing you at the bookshop. Good night. Hi, I am going to share with you today Polar Express. May, many of you may already be familiar with it, but I'll try to make it fresh. So on Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for the sound, the sound of a friend that told me I'd never hear, the tingling bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of a hissing steam and squeaking metal. It looked out the window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. And there's a picture of the narrator looking out the window. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the front door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I, I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me on board. And there's a picture of the Polar Express and you can see the snow lightly falling all around it. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies and nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa, as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. And there's a picture inside the Polar Express, and you can see the, the uh, waitstaff in the middle with the hot chocolate. <clears throat> Soon there was no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests. The lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high, it seemed as if we would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Actually, it went faster and faster. We ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on the roller coaster. And there's a picture of the mountains, and you can see way up in the top of the mountains, just slightly, the Polar Express. 
The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. And you can see the, the North Pole in the distance, that, that town or city in the distance with the lights gleaming on. The North Pole. It was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories with every Christmas toy was made. At first we saw no elves. They are gathering in the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give out the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all ask. The conductor answered, he will choose from among you. And there is a picture of the city of the North Pole. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside, we saw hundreds of elves in the middle of the city. As our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no further, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We passed through a crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were all excited. They pranced and paced ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing other I've ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart, and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us, and pointing to me, he said, let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up, and I sat on Santa's knee, and he asked, now, what would you like for Christmas? And there's a picture of Santa. And in the distance, you can see the hundreds and hundreds of elves cheering him on. I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine. But the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one of those silver bells from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. And there's Santa and his sleigh, and you can see the reindeer there, and you can see the narrator of the story down there, and, and barely visible is that, that bell that the, the little boy wanted from Santa as the first gift of Christmas. The clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whips. His team charged forward and climbed into the air Santa circled once above us and then disappeared into the cold, dark polar sky. And there's Santa circling above all the elves and also above the Polar Express uh, going off to make his rounds uh, on Christmas. As soon as we were back into the Polar Express, the other children asked to see my bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth and said, Merry Christmas in a loud voice. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from the whistle and sped away. And there's the little boy waving from inside his door, inside his home, as 
the Polar Express pulls away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. Imagine that. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, my fa said my father, it's broken. When I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard it at all. And there's a picture of him opening that last gift with the bell in it. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as the years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas when she could no longer hear the bell sound at all. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all who truly believe. That's the story of the Polar Express and happy holidays to all of you. Drop off your letters to Santa at Discover Doylestown's office, Klaus Harlan Real Estate, or at the Doylestown Bookshop. Santa is going to read your letters live from the North Pole each Wednesday on Discover Doylestown's Facebook. Hi kids. I'm going to read a story for you called The Snowbelly Family of Chiliville Inn. It's holiday time at the Chiliville Inn, and the Snowbelly family is in quite a spin. There's so much to do. What who can rest? Grandpa is greeting each guest at the door, in addition to handling his favorite chore, carving a gift for each guest. Inside the inn, there's songs in the air as Papa plays piano with a fabulous player and a solo from Twiggles the dog. Mama is bustling around with a tray of slippery ice slushies, an ice cream souffle, and a pitcher of icy cold nog. And the tree, what a tree, how the icicles glitter. And look, you can see there's a mighty fine knitter who lives here and grandma's her name. As Snowbird and Snowbell are topping the tree, Grandma is knitting at quite a rapid pace until she is heard to exclaim, Land sakes, I forgot. I've got yarn outside soaking. Kids, won't you please take some sticks and start poking to check on my red and green dye. As Snowbell and Snowbird go out to the barn, and start to swirl and swish the two vats of yarn, holding up strands to the sky. When who should appear out of the blue, Jingles the mischievous kitten, that's who, who was last seen resting in bed. Miss Jingles jumps up with spectacular speed, gets tangled like yarn in a cat tumbleweed, and when she rolls out, she's bright red. Well, Twiggles the dog simply can't be outdone. He figures he is the master of fun and wants to take part of the scene. So he lunges and lurches at Jingles the cat, tips over the vat with a very big splat, and now he is finally green. When Snowbird and Snowbell catch up with their pets, they hold them and scold them, expressing regrets, all gathered around in a huddle. Then little by little, they whisper and say, no way, what will Ma and Pa say? Oh look, we are like a green and red muddle. They start back inside, but all filled with fearing the worst. 
But when Ma and Pa see them, they can't help but burst into laughter and blurt out with glee, you look like Christmas. Well, what do you expect? These things happen when you're made of snow. We need pictures, most definitely so. Then Grandpa booms out and the whole room delights. Hey, don't forget, it's gift giving night. Is everybody ready to start? A mad scramble ensues and more fun is unloosed as presents once hidden are quickly produced. Oh, here comes the really good part. Everyone's thrilled with the gifts they receive, especially snow belly kids who believe that this is their very best Christmas ever. On his icicle bicycle, Snowbird is, goes riding. He's popping those wheelies. He's hopping, he's sliding. Will he ever stop? No way. And Snowbell can do what she's been wishing for all along with her fresh frozen flute. She performs a sweet song that melts the heart of everyone in the place. There's a hush in the room. Then a voice from the hall says, let's raise a glass to the best in of all. And they all smiles fill the place. To the Snowbelly family for their good cheer, where we're welcome each year, a toast to our wonderful hosts. Then as night starts to fall, like a big snowy feather, they all share a hug because they're happy together. And that is what counts the most.